Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for a how-to short. In this how-to, I'm responding to a couple of commentors who have asked if I can do a demonstration of doing up a couple of other bits of cleanup related to the Primaris Space Marines that I've recently been using for demos. There's two actually really good requests here in terms of things to look at. The first is from Avelio Mora, who asked, can I show how I clean up the plasma coils and the rails on the Primaris weapons. And let me show what I mean by that. So here you have a guy with a phased plasma rifle and there is a mold line that runs all the way across here. And if you're wanted to dry brush, ink, or you know, painted highlights, you've got a, a relief feature that runs perpendicular to the actual detail uh, and it's an artifact and it really spoils the look. Well, in my mind, if you want your models to look like the pictures that Games Workshop have in terms of the model and when they advertise these, you need, you know, you need to take that off. I've cleaned up all of my phase plasma rifles. So I've been for a raid into my bits box and I found this uh, plasma combi weapon. And this has got the same sort of issue as we can see. So I'm going to do the demo on this. Well, the second question was around cleaning up the mold lines on the Pitakini rails or the tactical rails we might call them. And you see these toothed notched rails that are on the top of the bolters. The way they show them, they don't actually work as Pitakini rails, i.e. A, a universal attachment point for accessories, because here this scope has been mounted at the back, and uh, you might also argue that the foresight is interfering with the sight picture of the scope. I don't know. But you could cut that off and mount it forward on the Pitakini rail, and it would look rather neat. Anyway, um, but yeah, so there is a mold line running through that and again it's an artifact of the production process and if you're dry brushing, ink washing etc these models it is going to get picked out as a relief feature and it just takes away from the final look you get with the model. A second commentator Nathan Anderson asked if I could look at the base plate of the bolt rifle magazine. This is a very similar sort of issue to the plasma coil and again we've got a mold line that runs across this this sort of notched surface. I mean I'm not entirely sure why you're getting notches on a magazine plate. I don't know if this is something you get in real world arms. Um, it's possibly there for grip, I guess. So we'll we'll look at that as well. So we've got the bolt rifle for those two, and then we've got the plasma gun. So that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I hope you find this little demo useful. In my last video where I did barrel boring, commenter Gregor called me out for making a Blue Peter reference without any toilet rolls and I think that's a fair shout. So in this video we're going to actually rectify that and in a true Blue Peter here's one I made earlier. Let's just visualize what we're trying to deal with here with a handful of toilet rolls. So if we imagine this is a magnified view of what we're trying to do with cleaning up all three of these issues and what we've got in effect is if we take dusty brush you've got a mold line that runs across this this relief feature. So this is a plasma coil, the Pitikini rail, or the grip plate on the bolt mag. So we need a tool which we can get in and, whoops, rolling everywhere. I've not used any sellotape or sticky back plastic. Clean it out and off we go. And we need to clean out the material that's in the troughs between these ridges. So there you go, Gregor. I hope that uh, satisfies your Blue Peter nostalgia craving. I, I guess you're a child of the 80s like I am. Let's start with the plasma coils. Right, so tools, what tools do we need? We've got three tools. We've got a blunt knife, we've got a sharp knife, and we've got a needle file, which is um, flat underside, curved upper side, and tapering to a point. I expect most of the work is gonna use the blunt knife and the needle file. And then as I've shown before, we've got, a bro we've got a dusty brush if we need to clean anything off. So let's start with the plasma coil. These are a bit less pronounced than the ones on the Primaris Marine. So you, we can start actually with the needle file. And what I'm going to first do is just sand down the harsh ridge or the high ridge as it stands. And this is to level it with the, I'm going to sand down the mold line and level it with the ridges of the plasma coil. So that doesn't, you know, just very gently sanding that down. Got to be careful not to sand the actual ridges down themselves. And that's that done. Now we need to take our blunt knife and then we, we're going to go in very carefully. We're going to cut the mold line out of the trough. This is a time consuming process. It takes patience and, and that's kind of, that's just the nature of the game. And now depending how pronounced these are, you can also use 
a needle file, which I'll show you a little bit of as well later. I actually did a lot of the work on the primaris with a needle file, but that's because the ridges are more pronounced there. So what I've done is I've just been and I've cut some material out. Right, let's have a go with the needle file to show you how you can use a needle file. And here, I'm just gonna sand along the, along the trough. And as before, each trough needs to be done individually. So you've got to be careful with your tool placement. Keep it gentle. Don't put too much force on. It's better to do more motions than do and take longer to do it rather than put too much force on and damage the detail. You can always take a bit more away if you've been gentle, whereas if you um, do it the other way around, then it's, you know, you have to build the model back up. Right, so I'm just gonna take some of this other mold line away to kind of get a better feel for the whole, how the whole part's gonna look once it's complete. So I'm just using my blunt knife here. Interesting thought on the, I mean, I've a lot of people I've seen use a Citadel a uh, mold line removal tool to do this. I've not used it, but from what I've seen, I, I can see it's got a use, but I think for fine detail work like this, you need a scalpel. The reason is you can't, you just simply can't get the, 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 the blade, shall we say, of the mold line removal tool into these narrow places. And the reason I'm saying use a, a blunt knife is a sharp knife is going to snatch at the detail too much and it might you might end up cutting too much away whereas with a blunt knife you can you can sort of roll out the mold line easier the you can roll out almost the mold line just sort of pick it out and the blade isn't going to snatch onto the other detail the same that's why i uh, i favor that approach just take that sprue attachment point down a bit I guess I'm, I'm just doing this bit here to just give you a feel for the, you know, how the whole thing would look if I was cleaning this up for a model. So this is coming on pretty well now. It's most of the mold lines being re removed. So now it's just kind of like just neatening it up just getting things looking consistent across the coil. It's a useful skill to, to practice this if you like your models fully cleaned up for painting, particularly if you're wanting to get the more professional looking end results. I think removing bits like this is a valuable skill to practice. And there are lots of plasma weapons and other sort of ribbed weapons in 40K. So for example, if you play the heresy era, um, you've got all the Volkite weapons, and sometimes, I mean, the Volkite weapons are even more challenging than plasma weapons in this regard. You might have a mold seam to remove from between the cooling fins on the Volkite guns. Pretty much there now. Just going to do a little bit more. A little bit trickier to do this because I'm the normal because I'm working around the camera. Yeah, I think that's um, that's pretty good. You can see that. There's a couple of bits that need turning out there as well, but, and it's just kind of then just gently work, working those bits out. And, you know, you can spend quite a lot of time getting these looking absolutely perfect. And I'm pretty happy with that, actually. That's, that's, a, that's decently done. So that's how to remove a mold line from the plasma coils on a plasma weapon type detail. So, yeah, hope you like that. Now let's move on to the question of the bolter the Pitikani rails.
here we've got wider space details. So if we go back to our toilet rolls, um, these rails are a bit a slightly different proposition. They're more like that because there's spaces between them. Though these are circular, these should really be square for this. So we need to clear the mold line out from these deep troughs and gaps. Because these need to stay square, a file or a thin file like that with any sort of curve on it isn't going to leave the edges square. So I'm going to do this bit with the knife. Well, I'm going to do that. I'll, I'll start on the surface or on the upper surfaces just with a, just with the file to clean off the mold line. So this is kind of similar to what I did on the plasma rails. So again, just gentle work, just gently taking the surface expression of the mold line away. And then we've got our blunt knife again. And again, you really need the tip of a knife to do this. The way to get a blunt knife is simply to, I mean, I buy these, these are, oh, what's it? What's a make? Swan Morton. So this is a UK manufacturer on surgical scalpels. This is a disposable one because my main knife has got a metal handle and I replace the blades. These disposable knives are dead cheap. Buy them, use them for your work. You know, eventually they'll get blunt and then you've got a blunt knife. The one thing to be careful of if you're doing that though, you do have to preserve the tip of the blade because these are quite easy to break off. Now you're gonna to have to be mindful over time not to break the tip of the knife away. And I've got lots of these where I have broken the tip of the knife away. So this is actually quite a valuable tool to me to carefully look after this knife. So we're gonna clear out between, we're gonna clear the mold line out from between these ridges. And by that, I'm just gonna go in with the knife and cut and kind of roll out a bit roll out the mold line and it's actually as you can see it's not as hard as all that to do again it's time consuming because you've got every single trough to do there's no well certainly that, that i found there's no quick magic bullet way to do this you, you've got to do each bit and I guess that's the consequence, isn't it? If you if you wanted to get that look, you're going to have to do deal with that on these miniatures. So having kind of like taken the first bits out, I've then brushed off the excess. I've brushed off the turnings, and then going in a second time with better visibility to clean out some more material. not looking too bad that I've just cleaned the lens face of the site there just to kind of help me get my eye in for where the mold line is and isn't it's always useful to do this to rotate your part Oops, sorry about that with the camera get light on it from different angles I mean I'm doing this in a top floor room so I've got, and it's an overcast day today, it's got natural light coming in from large windows, both on my left and my right hand side. Also use the light of the room that you're in to help yourself here. And if you're working under an artificial light, you can use the artificial light to create strong shadows to help you pick out mold lines or where mold lines are. I think I'm just about done with that. A little bit more to get out at the back there, at the rear notch. A little bit trickier position here because of the sight. Yeah, that'll do. See, this is uh, where plastic's a tricky, a tricky material to work with in resin because of its waxy 
elastic characteristics, it's a bit harder. Bits don't always, turnings don't always fall away from the model like you do with resin. So I'm just trying to fish out that last little bit there. There, there, there we go. Yep, pretty happy with that. So that is the Pitikini rail done. Now let's go and do the bolter mag, the base plate of the bolter mag. I guess as a detail, this is somewhere between the plasma coil and the Pitikini rail in terms of the style of detail. And you could probably, I mean, I'm using a knife here. I think you could probably do this with the needle file as he, if you fancied. I guess I suppose the takeaway message there is sometimes there's, there's more than one ways to do these things. And part of it is, is also thinking about what tools you're most comfortable with using. You know, if you're really good with a file, then you may just want to do most, just about all this work with a file. Uh, you know, like if you're really handy with a knife, you might do the whole thing with a knife. I find best results and when I work with everything. So, we've got some out, we've still got quite a bit of material in there from the mold line, so we're gonna go in again with the knife and fish it out. That's better. Just going to clean clean around the mag just to get make it look a bit neater overall to help visualize the final um, result that we're aiming to get. I mean, I suppose, you know, doing bits like this where it's on the underside of a model most of the time, it's a matter of, you know, do you want, you know, how much effort do you want to put into getting these models bob on and perfect? And, you know, that's personal choice. But if you're wanting to get to that stage, well, you know, this is a, this is a, a, little, a handy little demo of how to get there. You know, and uh, the, you know, if you've got a model with this bolt rifle raise and you'd want to do it anyway. Yeah, happy with that, there you go. So that's the base plate of the magazine cleaned up as well. So we've done the Pitikini rail and the base plate. I think that pretty much wraps us up there. Cleaning up the plasma coil and the Pitikini rail on the bolt rifle. I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any questions or comments, observations, whoops, like about flying plasma combi weapons, please do leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to uh, have a chat with you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.